just to write in the chat. Okay, perfect. Federica wrote it. So hi everyone. Um, today we're going to talk about tuning hyperparameters and uh, how to avoid overfitting. I'll just start my screen sharing. Sorry. Okay, perfect. So uh, do you see my shared screen? All right. Um, so this is chapter 12, as I said, model tuning and uh, dangers of overfitting. Um, we're going to talk about um, types of hyperparameters um, or tuning parameters um, to say. Um, we're going to speak about or talk about how different metrics can lead to different decisions regarding uh, tuning uh, parameters. Um, we're going to talk about how, uh, the dangers of overfitting um, and how um, hyperparameters can lead to this. Um, and also uh, talk about um, optimal. Um, different strategies, uh, search strategies for um, optimizing hyperparameters. Um, finally, we're going to see how to use the tune uh, function uh, in the dials package and, and how it's used within the tidy models framework. Um, so first of all, tuning parameters, what are they? Um, so my first, personally, my first intuition to what are hyperparameters or tuning parameters was this first example, as it says here, of hyperparameters, which means um, that a, a specific model um, has these uh, specific uh, parameters that can be that cannot be um, inferred or estimated directly from the data. Um, this is actually the how it's defined um, here and also in the book. Um, and, and for um, a bunch of these models, we have some examples here, like um, in boosting uh, algorithms, which are um, this kind of iterative approach to creating better models is the number of boosting iterations. Um, ANN, which is artificial uh, neural networks, is the number of hidden units or like the number of um, layers, so, so to speak, or like the uh, number of parameters within each layer. Um, for example, also random forest, the number of predictors we choose. We're going to, do, uh, to speak more about random forests later on. So a uh, number of predictors chosen for each uh, tree inside this random forest, the total number of trees, um, and also the number of data points. So these examples of uh, are of machine learning, learning uh, tuning parameters, or so to, uh, also known as hyperparameters. Um, but also, when I uh, read the the, the chapter, uh, it all, it also opened my eyes that um, we also have different more kinds um, of tuning parameters. For example, in pre-processing, uh, we can tune. Uh, in PCA principal component analysis, when we uh, take a lot of predictors and try to find uh, correlations between similar um, predictors and to create um, a smaller amount of um, beta predictors, so, so to say, so to speak. Um, so we need to, to choose what's the number of these extracted components. Um, if we perform imputation, for example, using KNN, uh, uh, K nearest neighbors, but also other algorithms uh, can are relevant. Um, then we need we have uh, hyperparameters for this uh, imputation algorithm. Again, for example, uh, K nearest neighbors. Um, so also we have this in pre-processing, um, and finally we have them. And this is was brand new to me. Um, Inside the statistical model themselves, we have structural parameters, meaning um, what is the specific function that performs um, the, let's say, the regression or whatever. For example, if we're performing um, logistic regression, we have um, three different 
um, fun specific logistic regression functions. So just to illustrate, um, I was cu curious myself, myself how, um, what was the difference between, uh, between these? Uh, so I found this picture with, I think it's <clears throat> illustrative about uh, the difference between um, the different link functions inside the logistic regret regression. So this is how the um, log, the, like the regular logistic regression function, uh, the probit logistic, reg um, logistic regression function and the C log log. Um, the chapter has its more uh, formal uh, definitions, but for me, it was um, interesting to see how it looks graphically. Um, so, um, so this is another example for, um, for tuning parameters, meaning which one of these functions should we choose um, during, uh, well, or when we perform a logistic regression. Um, so I'm going back um, to the slides. So these are all examples of tuning parameters. We had, uh, um, again, hyperparameters, pre-processing parameters, and structural parameters. Um, if you guys have any question, uh, feel free to, to jump in or uh, write in the chat or whatever feels comfortable to you. Um, so these, again, are examples for our tuning parameters. Now we'll look at um, ex counter examples for when we're not tuning or which parameters we're not tuning. Um, so one example during Bayesian analysis, which personally uh, I only like uh, have a very superficial um, understanding or acquaintance. Um, uh, when we need to choose a prior distribution, which means that um, we have like a, um, a predefined uh, guess or, or hypothesis about um, how the statistics um, are distributed or um, the outcome is distributed. Um, uh, yeah, mailing. Oh, oh, sorry. I I use only. I me too. I have a very superficial knowledge about the Bayesian, but I thought for Bayesians you don't have a predefined uh, understandings about the distributions. Isn't that, but we, because here you mentioned that we don't tune is, uh, we have a prior understanding about how the distribution looks. Can someone elaborate on that, please? Uh, I'll try to answer briefly and then Federica, feel free to jump in because I know you're a statistician. Um, so to my understanding, um, um, we have to uh, create like a, this kind of initial hypothesis and then the analysis itself finds what are uh, um, like what is the so to say real distribution of the, of the statistics. But um, Federica, uh, please uh, feel free. Um, would you like to uh, to comment, Federica? Or was my answer correct? I'm, I'm I'll be happy to hear you. Yeah. Um, I think that 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 is fine. That's fine. So if we go forward, then we see um a bit more about that, uh, and okay. so it might become a bit, a bit more clear. Uh, but basically, uh, so that that's what it's is about. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so this is during Bayesian st um, statistics or analysis, and also another um, uh, another example they give in the book, and they say it's um, it's a matter of debate is the number of trees um, in uh, random forest uh, algorithms, um, which they say it's it's just supposed to be large enough to be, um, um, and and when it's large enough, then it's supposed to be stable. So it's not um, it's not something that you're supposed to be uh, tuning, but also they say it's a, it's, an, it's a matter of discussion. Some people might argue differently. Um, so these are examples when not you tune. So now we'll look at um, our, we'll start looking at the example that we're going to work with uh, during this uh, session. 
Um, we're going to use the AIMS dataset, which we're already familiar with. Um, this is um, just the log transformation of the sale price as we're used to, we're used to do because um, we're used to log transforming um, um, prices. Um, and then we'll just create this initial split. Okay, so we have the train data, we have the testing data, and we're gonna stratify by uh, a predictor that is of interest for us in this specific example, which is central air conditioning. Um, the proportion of the split is 80-20. So 80% 80 of the data is going for the training data and 20% of the data is going to the testing data. Um, if we look at how or what's the relationship between um, sale price and central air conditioning, um, controlling for uh, for year uh, for year of the house, um, we can see here the bluish dots are um, houses that does have central air conditioning, and the red dots are houses that doesn't have central air conditioning. And we'll later look at how different um, tuning parameters can affect this um, uh, classification problem. Okay, so the problem that we face is how to class or to predict which houses does have or does not have central air conditioning. Um, but we'll face it later. So this is just like a, a, a preliminary um, data work. Okay, so. After uh, looking at this, um, where we need to decide which metric um, where are we going to use um, when we um, choose between different uh, different models. Um, so we'll uh, use a logistic regression model um, with um, three different uh, link functions. Um, one is logit, one is probit, and one is c log log, which or the three, three um, um, uh, link functions that we talked about. Um, just uh, in a minute, I'll look at the code and we'll see exactly what is the model that uh, we see here. Um, just, just jump in here. Where is it? Okay. So uh, you guys see my uh, RStudio panel, right? So this is uh, the model that we're fitting right now, okay? Um, it's a, a general uh, GLM, uh, general linear model or uh, logistic regression, um, as you can see here. Um, and this is the model that we're fitting. We're trying to predict um, what is the uh, probability that the house has uh, central air conditioning, which is the outcome variable or yeah, outcome. And using these uh, predictors, the sale price, um, which as we've, we've mentioned, we've already log transformed it um, the, in the year, okay? Um, and then um, using a um, uh, specific function, like that's how we um, define the function. And then we're um, using this function three times once, without any more arguments and two times with different um, link uh, link functions, the probit and the steal of log. Okay, so this is how we got to the table that we've seen earlier. So I'll go back to it. Um, this is here, okay. Um, and we, we get uh, three different log -lik likelihood ratios. Um, if we visualize what's the, um, if there is any significant difference between these three models, um, we can. This is the um, the panel to the left. We can see that if we look at log likelihood ratio, um, then uh, then there is a significant difference between the three models. Um, we get the best uh, the best um, fit um, from the logistic model. Um, but if we look at the area under the curve. Under the ROC curve, uh, we see that we don't have uh, a significant difference, or it might not be significantly different, uh, a significant uh, difference between the three models. 
So this is an illustration of the fact that um, the, the um, statistic that we choose to work with might have um, an impact on whether or not we choose uh, different models or not. If we visualize the three different um, regression lines, um, which uh, create this uh, difference between the uh, the different uh, like does it does it is it predicted or is it not predicted that it has air conditioning? We see that the three different lines, the dotted one, the dashed one, and the full uh, line are pretty much close to each other. Um, so it's not uh, uh, let's say visually speaking, this is not a, a significant difference. Um, so this one is, was an example of how um, the different metrics um, might lead us to different decisions um, about uh, predictions. Um, so I'll just see that I haven't uh, missed anything here. Okay, yeah, perfect. Okay, um, so now let's talk about um, overfitting. Okay, so overfitting um, is a major concern when we start uh, tuning the hyperparameters uh, because um, these uh, very tuned hyperparameters might um, uh, detect patterns in the data which are random and are not, uh, let's say, the, the major patterns or the patterns of interest for us. This is uh, below is an illustration of overfitting. This is underfitting for in a regression uh, context when we try to predict a numerical value. Okay, so let's say we have this pet pattern in the data. If we have this model, it's underfitting. It, it, it fails to capture the main pattern of the data, which is this kind of uh, parabolic uh, pattern. Um, this is what we're looking for. Okay, so we have this major pattern and our model is able to capture it. And this is overfitting, meaning that the model is, um, is also capturing these random or natural, so to say, um, variations within the data. So this is undesired as well. And this is the problem of overfitting that we're, um, or the danger when we try, uh, when we start uh, tuning. This was in the context of regression, but we also uh, can uh, show it in the context of classification. Imagine we have like this kind of space, uh, predictor one, the first predictor, the second predictor, and we have these two groups, the, the dots and the x's. Um, this kind of, um, of split of, of uh, creating a difference between these two classes is undesired because we fail to capture this kind of diagonal sort of pattern. Um, this is more desired, okay? So um, like this kind of pattern. And also we could even go for something more simple, which is like this kind of straight line. Then we might miss uh, the dot here to the upper right, but it would still be much better than the um, model to the left. But we also, sorry, run the risk of overfitting with this kind of pattern that is um, is too much um, wrapping itself uh, on these random patterns. For example, we might uh, think about this uh, this X here as more of an outlier than a real pattern that's within the data itself. Um, so this is the danger of overfitting when we start the tuning parameters. Okay, so um, when we, uh, and this is going to be the, the focus of the next chapters, when we talk about um, what are the strategies for creating this uh, search for, uh, for tuning the, the parameters, um, it's a problem of optimization. So we have a few, two or here are three uh, major st strategies for countering this problem. The first one is called grid search. Imagine that we have two um, hyperparameters that we're going to tune, x1 and x2, and this is called uh, the parameter space. Okay, so 
imagine that x1 can have values between 0 and 1. Also, the second predictor can have values between 0 and 1. Um, the first approach is called a grid search, meaning that we take this space um, that's spread uh, by these two predictors. And then uh, we sequentially um, create these like uh, evenly spaced uh, data points inside this, um, this parameter space. Um, and then we examine the, the, and we decide on which, which metric we're using, but we're um, examining which kind of uh, model is best estimated within each of these hyperparameters. For example, let's just uh, take this um, uh, hyperparameter here. So it would have the value of um, for x1 here for about uh, 0 0.45, 45. And here it would have the value for the second predictor of uh, 0 0.55. So this is this um, data point. And then we're going to do this uh, kind of uh, um, model estimation for each of these hyperparameters. Um, so this is a grid search approach. Uh, what we see in the background, um, let's say um, the red uh, lines is like the areas with uh, the worst fit and the blue lines are like the areas that are, let's say like highest um, in, this, uh, in this map or uh, are inside the blue areas here and here are the areas with the best fit. Um, so this is an example of a grid search. Um, another example, which I'm not sure we're going to talk about in the next chapters, is a random search. Um, we still have the same uh, um, the, the same um, parameter space, but now instead of creating this this like kind of sequential uh, grid, now we're just randomly uh, uh, picking um, hyperparameters each time we evaluate uh, the model. Um, and then where um, the, um, the idea is that um, we're going to uh, just randomly drop on like the, uh, a, uh, a point where it's very close to the best value. For example, here and here, these are two, uh, uh, two points where they're very close to the best results of the model. Um, in the last, um, the last example is um, iterative search, um, which means that we start with uh, uh, a specific um, a specific place, for example, here, um, and each time we create uh, another model that's supposed to be slightly better than the than the last model, and then. Um, it's not very clear here, but uh, it might have like this kind of course where it's like something like this. And then um, the, la uh, the latter models are supposed to concentrate in the place where here, where we have the best um, fit of the model. Um, as it says in the book, sometimes uh, you can create hybrid strategies, meaning you can start with uh, kind of a grid search and then follow it up on, with an iterative search um, to find the, the best fit. Um, obviously, each, each decision about uh, a different uh, search strategy um, also has computational costs, so it's also a consideration. Um, so these, these were the different um, search strategies. And uh, as I understand, these are going to be the focus point of the next chapters. How we do it in tidy models? Let's have a look. Um, first of all, um, we need to know for every model, what are the, the tuning parameters? Um, we, it's important to differ between two different kinds of, of uh, hyperparameters or tuning parameters. For every uh, kind of model or type of model, you have the main arguments, which are do which are not uh, uh, have a, like a specific dependency on a specific model on a specific sorry engine. For example, in the random forest from the ranger package, 
but they, they, um, they're present in every one of the random forest models. And additionally, we have engine specific um, tuning parameters. Um, we have here an example of how to look at this. Okay, so this is a link to the reference documentations of tidy models. So we can go over there. Oh, sorry. Okay. Well, I think it's better to open it in a new tab. Okay. So this is the tidy models official website. Um, and we can search here for specific uh, different models. So if we'll start, sorry, that's Hebrew. If we'll start writing uh, RAND for random forest, um, we can see down here that we have, I think, six different types or different engines for the random forest algorithm, um, which are all which are all present inside the Parsnip uh, package. So here we can see the different uh, what are these packages engines. Okay, um, for example, here Ranger. Okay, um, and every one uh, of them is, you can call it using this random forest function. Um, so let's go inside this random forest ranger specific function. And here in the details, we have uh, the, uh, the, the details about the tuning parameters. So these are the main, um, the main arguments, the main tuning parameters for random forest. M try, which are how many predictors um, we choose for the for a specific tree, um, the um, number of trees uh, for the entire forest, and the uh, minimum min n or minimal node size, meaning how many uh, data points for what what's this uh, minimal size of a uh, or the sorry the minimal number of data points within each node. So this is this actually decides how deep, so let's say, is the tree going to be. Um, and additionally, we have here, sorry, where is this? The specific um, um okay, so not actually it doesn't, it's not here. Um, but somewhere <laughs> we have a uh, documentation about specific uh, arguments for the ranger package. Uh, we'll see in a minute how we'll use it. Um, sorry. Okay, so never mind. Um, so we can uh, utilize this uh, documentation website for our advantage. Let's go back to our slides uh, and start with an, with an example. Okay, so again, as I said, where our uh, goal is, okay, so this is a different one. I, I was I got mixed up. Um, this is uh, predicting sale price by neighborhood, size of the property, which year it was built, and the building type. Okay, so this is our initial recipe. And now we can uh, build a random forest model, a regression one that's going to predict the sale price. Okay, so this is the specification of the model, random forest specification. We're declaring, we're using a random forest. We're setting our engine to ranger and the mode to reg regression because we're trying to predict sale price. Um, when we look at this model using the args function, uh, we can see here that uh, which which are the main arguments, okay, of the function, um, which are the m try trees and min n that we've talked about earlier. If you would like to look at the engine specific arguments, then we need to um, type this one and. We can look at it here inside my R Studio. Where is it? Okay, so for example, sorry, we have like a lot of uh, a lot of different uh, um, um, speci model specific parameters. 
Specifically, I wanted to focus on the re regularization factor, which is a kind of penalty um, similar to, uh, to how uh, adjusted uh, R square works when, when, when you add more pr uh, predictors then the R square is, uh, is a bit lower because you have like this kind of penalty. So this is another uh, similar kind of, uh, of panel. Okay, so this is another uh, engine specific for the Ranger package, hyperparameter. Um, so I'm going back. Wait, uh, I just yeah, want to make sure I got things clear. So you mentioned the regular Rization. So that one is as you add more parameters, you will be penalized, is it? Um, yes, maybe Federica would, uh, is able to elaborate so, more, but as I understand, yes, uh, when you have, when you insert uh, more predictors to each tree, then the, um, you have like this kind of small penalty because uh, you you have like a greater risk of over, overfitting. So this is kind of mm -hmm. uh, an attempt to control for overfitting. Federica, would oh, you like to, to say something more? Or is it? Uh, well, I can say more. That That's the, uh, that are these, um, these um, parameters called either parameters are, uh, when you tune them, you use them to um, basically uh, such as a grid search. Okay, you, you perform such as a, a grid search um, mm -hmm. and you try different values uh, to minimize the, uh, the metrics, in this case, um, uh, the um, um, residual sum of squares um, and uh, okay it depends by the each type of uh, uh, model as uh, some models have uh, uh, tuning parameters others not uh, random forest has this uh, number of trees that you can choose but basically, you know, the more the more you make the the, the model comp complicated, complex, a, mo a very complicated model, it's it's difficult to understand. So I would suggest to to try with a low lower value and then assess it with the highest values. So usually you start with like a thousand, uh, with a uh, and then then you make it more. Sometimes it's not needed. And then you have this mean n, uh, which as well, you can tune it. You can even tune, as, as I said, the number of trees. This mean n, um, so is the minimum number, okay? So you start from, from a certain uh, level and then you, that you set the minimum. Okay, yeah. And then this time- Thank you, Frederica. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, no, no, I'm just, um, uh, and this M try, uh, it's as well, uh, you know, another important uh, other parameter for random forest, which is connections, okay, based on a certain number that you provide. Hmm. Okay, I'm not. Uh, but usually to understand these things, uh, what I do is starting with a very uh, basic starting point, like one tree. Okay, I make one tree and see what's happened. And then I make a random forest because, uh, you know, a random forest is a certain number of trees. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this, uh, I'm just... Uh, mm, so this part of tuning parameters is very important. When you do, especially this is the machine learning part of 3D models. You tune the parameters, you are um, activating the machine learning part of modeling. Uh, and, and sometimes it depends, as I said, I repeat it again, it depends by the type of model, you might have other parameters to tune, otherwise not. So everything, 
fascinating part of uh, this uh, book, basically. Yeah, okay, thank you. So Meling, does this answer your question? Yeah, kind of. Uh, I will just explore further because I was just trying to think of like, okay, why they added the penalties and like how they added the penalties because it's not mentioned in the help document, right? It's like how the penalties are added. Because yeah. this, I think this will be slightly different from like in the normal regressions because you mentioned about the R square. So how they added penalties was they added, they adjusted the, uh, they have these adjusted R squares. Those are the penalties added. But I'm not sure how this really applies in this random forest tuning. Okay, the penalty is another uh, other parameter. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's... he mentioned that was the penalties added in the regularizations, right? So it's, it's in the formula, isn't it? When we put in the regular, yeah. So, okay. yeah. Yeah, but um, actually course. that's a good question. Yeah, I'm <laughs> not really sure. So maybe you can explore <laughs> it and come back to, uh, to us uh, next week. With, uh, and we'll all be smarter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because you, you, we have a, a penalties, uh, such as this exact name, as I have a parameter on other type of models that we we'll see in the next uh, use case that we uh, will be going through uh, very soon, I think. And then, um, mm, so here uh, you can uh, specify this regularization factor, which is very interesting things, yes, um, as an option in the engine. Yeah. Okay, um, so just, I think we'll continue, if that's fine. Okay, um, so this is an example um, of the same uh, thing that we did earlier, but now with uh, tuning, okay? So um, in the last slide, we've uh, built like this normal quote unquote um, random forest model, but now we're, um, we're tuning it, okay? So we're inserting inside the random, random forest function, we're inserting the tuning, the tune function for our, our main arguments for the M try and for the min N. Um, trees, uh, we just set to 2000 because of what we said earlier. And inside the set engine function, we call the range of um, engine. And then in here is where we insert the engine specific um, uh, hyperparameters. Um, and we insert it with tune. Uh, and this means, um, this is like kind of the ID, so to say or like the name of the specific um, hyperparameter. Yeah, um, and we set the motor regression. If we want to look at um, how it looks, we can call the parameters function. Actually, um, when I did this, I noted, noticed that it was deprecated um, and um, the new, um, the new uh, uh, best practice is to use the extract, parameters set dials, as it said also in the chapter. Um, I can uh, show it to you here. Um, let me go downwards, sorry. Okay, yeah, so this is, um, this is the new um, best practice. Um, I also created a, a pull request and sometimes in the future, it will also be pulled into the our uh, GitHub repository. So um, this is the function that we use the extract parameters set dials um, to look at the parameters. Um, we can continue continue here if it's fine with you. Um, and what we get as output is the parameters for tuning. Okay, so we have m try min n and reg, which is the name we gave to the regularization uh, factor. Um, uh, on the side of every object, we have like these uh, square brackets with either a plus or a question mark. 
a plus means that we have uh, all of the all of the details of the all of the um, met metadata for uh, the specific um, tuning parameters, and it's like it's a, it's an okay sign. It's, you're good to go. But when we have a question mark, it means that we need to add uh, a bit more uh, more knowledge to this specific hyperparameter in order for it to be tuned. Specifically here, um, if we want if we want to see what's what's up with this M try and why is it um, missing some data, um, we can just type. Um, sorry. We type M try. Yeah, when we type the M try function, we see here that we have the range, which is like saying, okay, so I'm going to pick a certain number of predictors for every tree between one and something. But the algorithm needs some kind of edge to know uh, in what range is it, does it supposed to, to look for uh, the best uh, the best hyperparameters. Um, so this question mark here says, okay, we need to update the, the higher uh, end of the range. Um, and if we type uh, min n, we'll see that we have um, a, a full range, which is uh, just like kind of uh, um, a predefined uh, default. We can also update it if we, if we want, but this is the default of tidy parts um, for the minimal size of, the, of each node. So we need to update um, the M try. Okay. Um, so the way to do this is to use the update function or finalize function. Uh, update uh, is like doing it manually and finalize is doing it automatically. Um, if we use the update function, it, it's important to understand it's, it updates in place, meaning that we're not assigning here, uh, look at this code, we're not assigning, we don't have this like kind of sign error, so we don't have it. Uh, we update the, the hyperparameters in place using the update function. And again, we have the model specification. Um, we're using uh, this extract parameter set dials function, and then we pipe it um, to the update function. And inside the update function, we add um, the, the new data uh, for the mtri hyperparameter. So we say to the mtri hyperparameter, okay, so go between one and four. Okay, so this is the way to, to do it. So if we run it right now, we'll see that we have now a plus in our M try. And additionally, if we just run this, it's supposed to also um, have a plus. This is the meaning of update in place that even after we've run this code, oh, sorry, so. It's not the case. Um, so it just means that we can pipe it later into, uh, into more functions. So my understanding of this was a bit wrong, but now try it. Um, yeah. So this is uh, like a manual approach uh, where we can define by our, like ourselves um, the range for the M try. But another option is to use um, the finalize function, okay? Um, the finalize function is uh, like a more uh, automatic, so to say, approach. Um, so uh, again, we, we can create uh, like this workflow, this model specification, uh, we're adding a recipe, and then we're using again the same fu function, extract param parameters, set dials, and finalize, um, uh, and we we use this function with our train. What it gives us is again um, uh, it says here like the plus saying okay we have a full range. 
But uh, if we want to look specifically um, on, on the mtri object, this is deprecated. I think we're just supposed to, sorry, do this one. Okay, so it errors. So we'll go back to a later look at what was specifically the problem here. But if we go back to our slides, okay, so here's some, some way it works. Oh, maybe my uh, package version is different than what they used. Um, so we can see that now after finalizing, the range is between one and 74. The reason that this is specifically 74 is that the um, original or the training uh, uh, table data frame had um, 74 predictors. Um, so this is the range that uh, the final finalized function is able to recognize by itself. Um, so these were the uh, two different approaches to how to update or add the um, the, the data, so to say, I'm not sure what's the correct word for this, uh, for um, the, the range for the, um, for the way to, for the hyperparameters to be tuned. Um, so this, this was basically it. And as we've said, the next chapters are going to look at how uh, different search st strategies are able to perform the tuning itself. Like by now, we've only created the, uh, the specification for the tuning, but we haven't had the chance yet to perform the tuning itself. Um, this is uh, uh, dependent on the specific search uh, strategy. Um, so this is it. And, and just like on a final note, um, inside um, this, um, um, meeting videos here, we have like a kind of, a, um, how to say, like a documentation of the earlier, um, earlier encounters and, and inside the GitHub repository, we also have like the, the chat, um, uh, text of, of the former encounters. And, and I, what I've noticed is I think it was in the last cohort that also they were also um, very uh, curious about their regularization, regularization factor, sorry. Um, so yeah, here, that's Federica. <laughs> so this is just uh, something nice that uh, I noted. Uh, so yeah, this is it. So thank you and please uh, feel welcome to ask questions or to add more thoughts or notes of your own. So thank you. Thanks, Natan. That was really nicely presented. I understood it a lot better than when I read the chapter. So that's really nice. Um, I still find, um, sometimes I find the kind of the syntax of how it's done in tidy models a bit confusing, like the way that you're kind of, if I understand it correctly, like, as you said, you don't assign, you're just saying like, oh, update it with um, like, mtri is this, the range is this. And I sort of kind of expect to be assigning that that back to something, but instead I need to kind of treat it as like, it's an update that's just going into the previous model, right? Yeah, I think it's like built in order to be piped. Like it's, yeah. like that's that's the framework. And um, it's also for me, it's, it's a bit confusing. And also I think um, one of the reasons that it, it has yet to really settle in is because I don't have like a specific project where like I can really utilize all of these like different uh, functionalities or utilities. Uh, but I guess, I don't know, but I guess like after you do it like once or twice or a bit more then it feels like more natural. But uh, I, I see your point and I, I feel uh, uh, the same way, I guess. Yeah. yeah, I think it's like, it's a way that kind of makes sense but you just have to get your head around it. Yeah.
So thank you, Fran. Any more uh, thoughts or uh, 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 remarks? I don't really have any thoughts, but thank you for the presentations and for answering all my previous questions. <laughs> it was a very nice presentation. I, I will look into the regular uh, regularization factors and I'll maybe update you guys in the chat before the next meeting. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So who would like to be our next presenter? <laughs> if any of you would like to present the next chapter or otherwise I'll do that. We have um, some interesting uh, chapters, uh, grid search or iterative search, which are both very interesting. Um, so it's up to you. If you'd like to have a go, maybe. Okay. Let, yeah, let's... it sounds like it's for you next time. No, that's okay. That's okay. For me, it's fine. Um, so we'll catch up on Slack. And thank you very much for this presentation again. Uh, and to all of you for attending the session. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Have a good day.